book friends, today's episode of Biblio Happy Hour is brought to you by Bibliofinder, a new online directory for independent bookstores. Bibliofinder allows users to find bookstores worldwide based on your current or planned location. book friends welcome to biblio happy hour a podcast that's sharing bookseller stories what's new in books and everything bookish i'm your host victoria wood in today's show we'll be talking to kevin cushman and he's from the blue manatee bookstore located in cincinnati ohio Before I get started with today's show, I just wanted you to know that you can tune in to our Biblio News segment every Monday right here on Biblio Happy Hour. We'll be sharing new releases for the week, other titles to look out for in future, bookstore events, and what's trending. Looking for more bookish content? You can listen to our off-the-cuff discussions, get top-shelf monthly recommendations, behind-the-scenes content, perks, and more over on our Patreon page. Patreon allows listeners like you to support a show you love, plus it helps us to grow and embark on new and amazing projects for both the book and bookstore community. It's super easy, so just check out the details and the different levels you can support us over at Patreon dot com forward slash bibliofinder and wherever you're listening to this podcast please don't forget to share subscribe to the show and leave us a rating and review Alrighty, everyone let's talk with our guest kevin thank you so much for coming on the show and welcome to biblio happy hour Thanks, Victoria. I really appreciate being here. Yeah, we're so happy to have you. So uh, really quick, before we get started, are you a coffee or a tea person? A coffee person. Oh, okay. So you start your day with coffee always? Always start it. Yep. Yeah. Started when my yeah, my second child was uh, going through a colic phase and never looked back. <laughs> never looked back. Okay. I know colic <laughs> can be rough. Uh, so anywho, let's get into the bookstore. Uh, tell us about Blue Manatee, where you're located, and share a bit about your town of Cincinnati. Sure. Uh, well, first of all, Blue Manatee has a, a very rich history and very much of a, an eclectic and sort of hybrid rebirth that we've brought the bookstore into in the last few months. But uh, it's located in the area of Cincinnati called Oakley, which is itself a very eclectic and mixed area of town, mm-hmm. uh, a very diverse area full of young families, but also new and emerging places like coffee shops and, and microbrew pubs, um, churches that have been there for 150 years and wow. families that have been there for 150 days. So it's really kind of a crucible of activity for young families uh, that are growing into and and starting to put down roots within the city of Cincinnati. Um, Cincinnati itself is a wonderful town. A lot of folks call it a a big town versus a small city because it does have a very familiar feeling. It has that Midwest vibe, but it also has a very entrepreneurial uh, sense to it built on the fact that we have some of the largest national and international corporations headquartered here, Procter & Gamble, Kroger, et cetera, mm-hmm. uh, with a really interesting mix of both young professionals as well as um, well-established multi-generational families. So uh, tell us about the actual bookstore. Tell us about Blue Manatee. Sure. Uh, Blue Manatee, as it, it currently is situated, has been in its current location for about two years, but it traces back to about 30 years ago when it was mm. open under the name Blue Marble. Oh. about a half a mile down the street from its present location, still in the Oakley neighborhood of Cincinnati within the city limits of Cincinnati, kind of on the east side within about uh, seven miles of downtown. So not a far, not far up, flowing out into the suburbs. It's really brought into being part of the, the city center or the, or the core of, of what makes Cincinnati fun and exciting. But the bookstore itself has always been a neighborhood treasure where families come in to bring their children in and introduce them to reading for the first time. So really built around a legacy of the traditional classic books, board books, and just being able to spend time with children in quiet corners of a very welcoming environment and share stories with them, 
introduce them to what it means to, to interact with an author or an illustrator in a very cozy feel. And even though the, the name of the store was transitioned about 17 years ago uh, to the Blue Manatee, which is a play on the word humanity, by the way, and moved down the street into a newer facility, the vibe has always remained the same. It's about families. It's about spending time together. And selling books is really just a part of the process. It's more about introducing you to the joy of reading and valuing reading. Uh, as you grow through your uh, early childhood uh, and into becoming a, a much more voracious reader as a young adult. But I also notice that as a part of the bookstore, there's also a Blue Manatee Literacy Project. Uh, could you tell us about that? Sure, sure. I appreciate that. And it, it really is a story, story of reinvention. So um, at the end of last year, at the end of 2018, the, at that time, present owners of the store uh, had decided to move in a different direction and were looking for a new set of folks to come in and run the store. And it actually sent out uh, almost a, a Charlie and the Chocolate Factory missive into the neighborhoods or into Cincinnati saying, would someone like to come in and be the new custodian, the new owner of this store? And they had received about 160 individual responses saying, oh, we'd love to do this just based on the legacy and the, the treasured nature of the store. We approached it, my partner and I approached it in a different way, having experienced a lack of literacy, proficiency, and lack of access to resources among some of our most disadvantaged neighborhoods in the city, much like every large city has. And so we presented this opportunity to say, let's take this store and make it an engine inside of a larger nonprofit initiative aimed at bringing the literacy movement into every part of Cincinnati, using the store as as really a beacon or a storefront, so to speak, for that mission. So that proposal was the winning proposal. The golden ticket was awarded to us. Um, and after the store had been dormant for a couple of months at the beginning of 2019, we reopened it in April under this new banner of Blue Manatee Literacy Project. So the store itself is really a welcoming spot and a revenue generating uh, component of the broader literacy mission. So uh, tell our listeners, what can young readers, because I know this, um, you know, this is geared primarily to children, but what can our young readers and parents expect when they walk into the Blue Manatee bookstore? Give us a visual, uh, maybe, I don't know, from the parking lot inside. What can people expect coming to your store? So the store, because of where it is in an old established neighborhood in Oakley, is a, it's right on the street. You park where you can find a spot. We don't have a massive parking lot. Right. And in that sense, it kind of creates this come on in and, and park where you can and, and bring your children in. Uh, we welcome children and families in in a number of ways, from story times to play times to art and craft activities to author illustrator visits, even in multiple languages. So we have a, a Spanish story time. We have a Russian story time. Wow. And we have a Young Black Readers uh, story time where we're sharing books with uh, every component of our uh, our neighborhood and, and our customer base. So when you walk in with a child, you'll find a lot of small areas to sit, to sit off in a cozy chair or on uh, a mat or a piece of carpet tucked away in a corner where even though it's a 1,500 square foot store, which is tiny, you can find peace and quiet and really have that alone time. But at the same time, a child's imagination will be captured by we have a train that we have books displayed on and we have a sidelines area where you can go in and try things and all of it is connected in a way that makes you think of it as a much more of a throwback type of almost hobby store feel to it um, but the focus is obviously all on children's literature right. so you'll find the classics there you'll find new releases there really woven together in a beautiful way a lot of thematic uh, visualization you see in the store and you walk in changed monthly um, and really brings the imagination out. And that's the whole purpose is just starting this journey of what we call joy and wonder and empowerment uh, for young readers as they start to realize this is something I can do and I want to do it. Joy, wonder and empowerment. Those are definitely some solid building blocks. But tell us about you, Kevin. How did you get involved in the bookstore business? I, I know you mentioned earlier about the previous owners putting out a bid and you and your partner um, you know, submitted a proposal for this. But did you always know that you were going to open an independent bookstore or did an opportunity just present itself, uh, which is the bid and you're like, yes, I think I can do this? I, I think this it's a great question. And even my wife, <laughs> asked me uh, when this first started, are you really sure you want to do this? <laughs> so I'm, you know, I'm a 50 year old guy who spent his entire career in startup and technology businesses in the energy industry. 
Uh-huh. And what really, this turned out to be a really serendipitous moment when the previous owners announced they were going to do something different and take this in a different direction. I have spent time tutoring and mentoring young students in at-risk areas of Cincinnati in just in terms of reading with them one or two hours a week right? and really recognized the very personal impact that had on me when you looked across a room of 20 kids and you knew of those 20, maybe two of them had books at home. Mm. And of those two, maybe only one had parents or uh, caregivers that had the time or, or resources to share that joy of reading with them. Yeah. And that was kind of a gut punch, honestly. So yeah. when this opportunity came about, uh, we put together this idea and this concept of really turning the, the purpose of the store 90 degrees and facing that problem. And that's what really sparked my interest in saying, maybe I should get into this and, and become a steward of the store. Um, but actually the interest is one of much more of community ownership and stewardship on our part. We don't own the store. The Mm. community essentially owns the store and we just serve as directors. So it's very much continuing its legacy as a community treasure. But from my my perspective personally, we're just bringing a startup mentality to this thing and trying things that nobody's tried in terms of literacy programming and taking full advantage of the fact that as an indie, you sit in this really neat ecosystem of publishers and you know, brethren in the independent bookstore environment and authors and illustrators who, once they hear what we're doing, are drawn to this. And it's really creating a spark across what we've seen in terms of the industry partners we have. Absolutely, absolutely. Hey guys, listen to the full podcast episode over on our Patreon page. So Patreon allows listeners like you to support the show as well as our online directory for independent bookstores. You'll also get additional perks for joining, such as discount codes for some awesome products and services. You'll be able to share your input and submit questions for the show, get behind the scenes content, weekly business updates, shout outs, plus lots more. That's patreon.com forward slash bibliofinder. I'm really looking forward to talking with you there.